In this video, we're going to dig a little deeper into quadratics and talk about the number of solutions of a quadratic equation and how we can tell what how many solutions there are graphically and algebraically, and also a little bit about modeling real-world scenarios using quadratics. So first of all, the number of solutions. Uh, unlike a line, which typically there's one solution or no solutions if it's a flat line, with a quadratic, you might have noticed that when you're doing it, you mostly end up getting two solutions, but there are cases where you sometimes only get one solution or even no solutions. So let's just do a quick example. If I were to just say, you know, y equals x squared plus one, what are the solutions, meaning the x-intercepts or zeros of that parabola? Now, if you were to just, first of all, let's just think about it graphically. If you were to graph this parabola out, Let's see, it opens upward because there's a positive in front of the x squared. And really there's no x term, there's just an x squared term at a constant. The vertical intercept here is one. So a regular y equals x squared parabola just looks like this. And so this is just that shifted one unit up. So this is just gonna look like this. Now this is what this parabola looks like. Graphically, we can tell that there are no solutions because nowhere does this parabola hit the actual x-axis, right? There's no intersection. And that's ultimately what a solution is. It's the x-intercept, and if that parabola never hits the x-axis, there won't be any solutions. There won't be any x-intercepts. So that's one way to tell graphically. If your parabola just doesn't touch it, if it's an upward sloping parabola whose vertex is that a positive y value, then it's not gonna touch the x-axis. Similarly, if it's a downward parabola whose vertex is below the x-axis, that's also not gonna have any solutions. So that, that, that's one thing to keep in mind. Notice if you were to actually try to solve algebraically here, you just said zero equals x squared plus one. You subtract one from both sides, negative one equals x squared. And you can see that that won't work because you can't take the square root of a negative number. And so that's why you run into a you know, you run into a wall algebraically as well. So that's the case when you have no solutions. You might also have cases though where you have exactly one solution. So if on the other hand, your parabola looks something like this, where the vertex itself is on the x-axis, well now the, the parabola is only touching the x-axis once, so there's only gonna be one uh, x-intercept. And so that's, that's, that's uh, that case. And then of course, the sort of standard case that you're used to is like this, where if you have your parabola intersecting the x-axis twice, that means there's two solutions, right? So that's graphically now, it's pretty easy to tell. If you're given the graph, it's really easy now to look and just say, oh yeah, no solutions if it doesn't touch, one solution if it's sort of tangent here, and two solutions if it sort of crosses the x-axis there. Now, what about algebraically? Here's where we can use some insight into the quadratic formula itself and look at this thing called the discriminant. So uh, just to elaborate a little bit, you might be used to the quadratic formula uh, written as negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And uh, a slightly useful way to write it is to split that denominator, that 2a, so we could split it as two terms, this over 2a, and then this other guy over 2a. So algebraically, when you're using the quadratic formula, why is it that we usually get two solutions? It's because you have something plus or minus, right? So if you're plusing and minusing something, that already is two solutions if you have. If this number is two, then it's like you're adding two and you're subtracting two. And so if this is three, you know, if you end up with three plus or minus two, there's going to be two solutions, three plus two and three minus two, right? So when would you get exactly one solution? Well, you get one solution when you're, the guy that you're plusing and minusing is exactly zero. Suppose you did the quadratic formula and this this thing inside the square root, the b squared minus 4ac. Notice it sort of doesn't matter what the denominator is or even whether you square root it or not. If that b squared minus 4ac is zero, then the square root of zero is zero. 
and then zero divided by anything, 2a is still going to be zero. So basically, here's the rule. If b squared minus 4ac, that, by the way, is called the discriminant. So if the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, if the discriminant is zero, then we know that that, per, that quadratic equation has exactly one solution, exactly one solution, because it's like you're going to be plusing and minusing zero, and then so your two answers are going to, in this case, be three plus zero and three minus zero, so just three. That's like this green parabola over here, you know, it's only intersecting the x-axis once, and so that's exactly one solution. Now, if the discriminant is positive, then that's where you have two solutions, because this is some positive number, squared, and that's still some positive number, divided by 2a, you know, might be positive or negative, but in either case, you're plusing and minusing something, and so there's two solutions. So ultimately, if we were to summarize this, I'm just going to make some space here. So if we were to summarize, um, if the discriminant, if the b squared minus 4ac, if this is positive, then there's two solutions. If it's equal to zero, then there's one solution. And if it's negative, if it's less than zero, huh, that means that there's a negative inside the square root. And the square root of a negative, you know, that's not a real number. So in that case, that's where you're gonna have zero solutions. So just looking at that example I gave earlier of this uh, y equals x squared plus one, if I were to say find the zeros, the solutions using the quadratic formula here, uh, here our a is equal to one, our b is equal to zero, right? Because there's no x term, and our c is equal to one as well. But in other case, if you were to find the discriminant, the b squared minus four ac, that's going to be 0 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1. So overall, that's just going to be 0 minus 4, so negative 4. So long story short, looking at this, you know, even if it wasn't obvious, if this was like a more complicated thing, uh, just looking at that b squared minus 4ac, knowing its sign, will tell you how many solutions there are to this quadratic equation. So changing gears completely, why do we talk so much about parabolas uh, and their solutions? Why is it that the solutions or the roots, the x-intercepts of a parabola is something that people often try to solve for? Well, let's first do a real-world example where we're actually modeling a real-world scenario using a parabola, and then we'll interpret what the zeros, what the solutions mean. So let's look at this problem. Suppose the cost of producing Q units is, so here in this context, you're a business, you're selling Q, let's say you sell ice cream, Q is the number of units of ice creams that you sell, the number of ice cream cones that you sell, and it's saying that your production cost is this much. Notice this is kind of realistic, right? Because even if you make nothing, you're still, it's still going to cost you a hundred uh, because that's usually in economics what we call your fixed cost. So it's like your fixed cost, no matter what, you got to pay a hundred, that's just to set up shop. But then plus, the more you produce, the more it's going to cost you to operate your business, right? So that's your production cost. All right. But we're selling each ice cream for 25. And so if that's the uh, revenues that we're getting, uh, what's uh, so what is your profit? So the formula for profit, which might be familiar from high school, is simply how much money you bring in, revenue minus cost. And here your revenue, how much money do you bring in? Well, let's see, you're bringing 25 per unit times the Q units that you sell, so 25 times Q, that's how much money you bring in your revenue, minus your cost, which we just, we were given in this problem is Q squared plus 100. Notice that, you know, you're subtracting your costs when you're finding your profit, right? Your profit is how much you have left over after subtracting your cost out. So that negative will distribute, right? So it's really minus 100 when we distribute it, right, for our profit. So distributing this out a little bit, that's going to be 25Q minus Q squared minus 100, which, notice, this is mathematically no different than me just saying, let's see, the negative X squared plus 25X minus 100, right? Like this 
is the same equation as this, just if you call it Q instead of X. The variable you choose to label it as doesn't actually change the concept of it. It doesn't change the process for finding the solutions or anything like that. So in either case, your profit is equal to this formula, which is really just this parabola, which notice we know is downward opening, has an intercept of negative 100, right? So we can observe those things. If we were to try to graph this thing out, it sort of looks like this where, you know, even if we were to sell our x-axis is quantity and our y-axis is profits, even if we were to sell zero units, our profits will be negative 100. That's the y-intercept here, right? And uh, it's downward opening, so it's going to have some sort of, it's going to look something like that. And so now, if you're wondering how many units of ice cream do you sell to break even? So in this case, your break even point, meaning points where your profits are zeros, would be the x-intercepts. So you could find the x-intercepts um, by doing, and again, so here with this, you can either factor or you can use a quadratic formula if you can't factor it. So here, just rewriting this out, here, let's just practice using the quadratic formula. So here, using the quadratic formula, again, noticing in this equation that a is negative 1. a is negative 1, because that's the term in front of the x squared term. Uh, the b is 25, and the c is negative 100. So the quadratic formula is going to give us negative b, negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 25 squared, minus 4 times a, which is negative 1, times c, which is negative 100. So all over 2a, which is 2 times a negative 1. So if you were to do this thing out, let's see, on your calculator, 25 squared, that's going to be, let's see, 25 times 25 is 625. So that's going to be negative 25 plus or minus. Here we got 625. And then negative 1 times negative 100, that's positive 100. So overall, that's minus 400. All over, that's negative 2. So again, we could just do this out. Negative 25 plus or minus. 625 minus 400 is going to be 225. The square root of 225, that's going to be 15. So long story short, this is negative 25 plus or minus 15 all over negative 2. So that gives us negative. So here the two solutions we have are negative 25 plus 15 over negative 2, and negative 25 minus 15 all over negative 2. And so this is simplifies to negative 25 uh, plus 15 is going to be negative 10. So negative 10 over negative 2, which is going to give us positive 5. So that is one of our intercepts, 5. And the other one, negative 25 minus 15, is going to give us negative 40. So negative 40 over negative 2 is going to give us positive 20. So 20. So there you have it. So those were nice numbers. So you're either when you're selling 5 units or 20 units, either of those will give you zero profits. Now, there is a way to easily find this vertex using calculus. So that's coming up later on. But again, this is just going to show how useful modeling parabolas can be for real world scenarios.